Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship online with us today. Service will begin shortly. listen to the upcoming announcements for this week. Join us along with Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat every two weeks on Mondays at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held on Zoom as our presenters touch on how faith and mental health intersect. The next session will be on Monday, August 24th. Please visit the link on the screen to register for free. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of kingdom impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen and remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's Outdoor Service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing. Kingdom Worship Center small groups are a great way for our members and friends to engage in biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. If you need more information, please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information. If you have yet to pick up your free bottle of anointing oil, please email profit min at kingdomworshipcenter.org to reserve your bottle. Pickups will be available at our Towson campus each Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. or second and fourth Sundays at our Columbia campus after service. If this is your first time joining us in service and you have a prayer request or a praise report, please send an email to prophetmin at kingdomworshipcenter.org. To get up-to-date information and special messages from our leaders, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. You can also like our Facebook page, Kingdom Worship Center, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media.
listen to the upcoming announcements for this week. Join us along with Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat every two weeks on Mondays at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held on Zoom as our presenters touch on how faith and mental health intersect. The next session will be on Monday, August 24th. Please visit the link on the screen to register for free. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of Kingdom Impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen and remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's Outdoor Service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing. Kingdom Worship Center small groups are a great way for our members and friends to engage in biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. If you need more information, please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information. If you have yet to pick up your free bottle of anointing oil, please email profit, M-I-N, at kingdomworshipcenter.org to reserve your bottle. Pickups will be available at our Towson campus each Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. or second and fourth Sundays at our Columbia campus after service. If this is your first time joining us in service and you have a prayer request or a praise report, please send an email to profit, M-I-N, at kingdomworshipcenter.org. To get up-to-date information and special messages from our leaders, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. You can also like our Facebook page, Kingdom Worship Center, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media.
God, we still trust you. We still believe in who you are. And because we believe in who you are, we say yes to you. We give your name glory, Jesus. We give your name all the glory, Jesus. We trust every action that you take. We trust every move that you make. God, we believe in your will and we believe in your power because you are exactly who you said you are. You are the healer. You are the way maker. You're God of the breakthrough. God, we give your name glory on today. God, we give your name glory. Hallelujah. 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 You don't make any mistakes, but you do all things well. You don't make any mistakes, but you do all things well. There's no failure in you. There's no failure in you. There's no failure in you. There is no failure in you. Hallelujah. 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 So God, we give you a whole trust. So God, we give you a whole trust. So God, we give you a whole trust. And we believe in who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give your name praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 
Thank you for being mighty and powerful. Thank you, Jesus. We trust in your power. We're strong in you. Spirit. Spirit move upon our hearts. We're open. We are open. We are ready. We say yes to you. Can lift our hands and say that. Lift your heart and say that. Spirit, come. Change our minds. Change our minds. We're open. We are open. We are ready. We say yes to you. Yes. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. We are open. 
We are ready, we say yes to you. Spirit, come and change our minds. Spirit, come. Let this mind be in me. And it's also in Christ Jesus. Because we are ready, we say yes. Do it one more time, do it one more time. Come on, we sing it from our heart. It's a prayer song. Spirit. Spirit, move upon our hearts. We are open. We are open. We are ready. We say, we say yes, yes to you. Yes, change our minds, Lord. Spirit, come. Change our minds. Change our minds. Yeah. We are open. We are ready. We say yes to you. We say yes. Hesitation. We say yes again. There's no resistance. We say yes. We say yes again. Yeah. Without condition, Lord, there is no reason. We say yes. We say yes. Without hesitation. There's no resistance. There's no resistance. We say yes. We say yes again. Without condition, Lord. One more time. One more time. There is no, There's no resistance. resistance. Yes, no resistance. Yes, we say yes. We say yes. Hey. Without hesitation. Yes, we say yes. We say yes. There's no resistance. There's no resistance. Yes, we say yes. We say yes again. Yeah. Without condition. One more time, one more time. There one more time. No Come on. Come on. Come on. Sing it to him. Yes, we say yes. We say yes. Without hesitation. We agree with you quickly. And we say yes. Without condition, Lord, there is no reason. We say yes. We say yes. This is a new yes. A yes that's permanent. Our lives are yielded. Will you fill us again and again? This is a new yes. Our lives are permanent. Our lives are yielded. Will you fill us again and again? A yes that's permanent. Our lives are yielded. Sing it again. Same thing. This is a new yes. It's a yes that's permanent. Yes that's permanent. Our, lives Our lives are yielded. Will you fill us? Will you fill us this is a new yes. Hey. This is a new yeah. A yes that's We're not taking it back this time. Our lives are yielded. Lives are we are yielded, yielded people. Will you fill again us and again. again this and is a new yes this is a for a new season. New Keep going. Come on, push it in. Again. 
Yes, our lives are yielded. Heal us again. This is a new yes. A yes that's permanent. Our lives are yielded. My soul says yes. Oh, yes. trust you and obey and when your spirit yeah speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree everybody and my answer will be yes Lord. yes Lord. Spirit speaks to me 
With my whole heart I'll agree <laughs> My answer will be yes Lord. Yes Yes challenge our thinking uh, that God is trying to move us to a new dimension. Uh, just for a moment, just, just in the chat room, if you would, I would like for us to have this worship experience together. Go ahead and let somebody know that God is challenging us to live in a new dimension, a new dimension. There ought to be an experience that we're having with God in this present time that we have not had before. So whoever you are, wherever you are, if you've had some um, experience with God in this moment of your life, you ought to be having some brand new experiences. There ought to be something that's happening in your life. Uh, there ought to be some testimony that's going on in your life uh, that ought to be greater than anything you've had before. And I prophesy to your life that there is greater that is coming. And I know that we're in the midst of a pandemic, and I even caution us to to understand the time that we're living in. There are some critical things that are happening in this time. Uh, we understand here in the U.S. where we are is that uh, we have an election cycle that is coming along very soon, in the month of November, and, uh, but we also understand uh, how divided the United States have been um, over the course of this last, or how, it's, well, it's always been like that, but it's been revealed over the last four years or so, um, and we've been able to see it uh, more blatantly. And because of that, um, do not think it strange if November causes you to be able uh, to grit your teeth a little bit uh, because of an uprising or an upheaval of those who become disgruntled uh, no matter what side of the aisle you find yourselves on. Understand this. Come on, prophetic people, hear me for a moment, is that regardless of where you are, is if you are on far right, far left, middle right, middle left, wherever you are, this election cycle will find some people where they have a strong disappointment. And that strong disappointment has been given permission over the last few seasons to express itself in brand new ways. And so we must be uh, prayerful in this season that as there has been permission granted for new expressions, uh, that we are being very wise. We are being wise um, and not employing the wisdom of men, but employing the wisdom of God for what we ought to be doing in this season. I want to call your attentions to, uh, on last Sunday, I talked to us a little bit about kingly vision, kingly vision. And I want to carry this kingly vision a little further and go into a little depth, uh, further depth with this kingly vision that we've talked about um, because there are some things that we ought to be recognizing that we have not seen before. And before I go into some great depths with that, let's, let's start here with this, this particular um, thing. There's an issue in the body of Christ today that um, where so many are attracted to that which is prophetic. Attracted to that which is prophetic. We even have given... Uh, Terry, the prophetic people are good nickname. We call you creatives, right? We call you creatives, and we have this, this wonderful thing that we started doing, and, but what we have uh, 
been able to do, what we haven't been able to do is, is even with creatives, is we are now in a place where we must realize that the same power of God that has been operating uh, in those who claim a prophetic anointing, that same power needs to be operating in those who call themselves teacher, call themselves evangelists, call themselves pastor, call themselves apostles. And I, I'm afraid that what has been happening in this season is because of the attraction of the supernatural. I'm talking about the natural attraction to the supernatural. There's a natural attraction to that which is supernatural that is within all of us. It is our desire to desire God that is innate within all of us. And since we naturally have this innate ability to be attracted to God, thus to be attracted to that which is beyond natural, thus supernatural, we, uh, we normally find ourselves in putting a box around that which is supernatural and call it prophetic. And I want to, to, to broaden our mindsets that if you are a teacher, you ought to be a supernatural teacher in the body of Christ. If you are an evangelist, you ought to be a supernatural evangelist in the body of Christ. If you are an apostle, you ought to be supernatural, a pastor, supernatural. You get the point. But whatever it is that you have been gifted to do, called to do in the body of Christ, you ought to walk in that in a supernatural anointing in the body of Christ. That you, you, you should not leave and allow just the prophetic oil to be the only one who has rights, y'all could God Almighty, to that which becomes mystic or mystical. Hallelujah. But those uh, but but in this moment that if, if, if you are uh, waking up in the middle of night and you're realizing that you have a feeling of what somebody's going through and you want to help them pray through it. Guess what? That's not prophetic. That's pastoral. Oh, God, if, if when you begin to talk to somebody about Christ, all of a sudden God gives you an understanding and, and, uh, of what they've been going through in their lives. And you can begin to pray with them about about the things that have been transitioning in their lives. That's not prophetic. That's evangelistic. Good God. Almighty. But what we like to do is we like to put it in one particular lump sum. Y'all not help me. That says prophetic. And then before we know it, we have a whole body of Christ that likes to lump itself in one of the fivefold ministry gifts. And then we end up with a body that will not mature because evangelists are now are now calling themselves prophets. Y'all good God. And pastors are calling themselves prophets. And, and if, if, if you don't mind, and stay with me for a second, and, and we've been guilty of it. Kingdom Worship Center's been guilty of it. We've called ourselves a prophetic house. And, 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 and I've realized, Darian Lee, Dennis, that the danger, we talked about this recently in a meeting that I had, that the danger of, of us identifying ourselves as a prophetic house is that evangelists now want to be prophets. But the truth of the matter is that we're a fivefold ministry house. Y'all could go. And we need to place an emphasis on whoever God has called you to be. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, and I believe that with God, when we step into this dimension, what we will find out is we will find out that we, God is moving us to a place where we must have dominion. But it is hard to get dominion with immature people. Hard, it's hard to obtain dominion when you're immature. And it's hard to become mature when you haven't been impacted by every gift that God has given us. See, because these fivefold ministry gifts have been given to us for the perfecting of the saints, the maturing of the saints. And so if you're not being what God has called you to be, then I can't grow up. And if I can't grow up, then I'm only going to want to be one thing. Uh, Y'all could call it. I'll never recognize who he's made me to be and say, you know what? I'm all right with being that. Uh, so God is calling us to be in this place where we become okay with who, being who God has created us to be. We must be okay with that. I want to, I want to, I want to call our attention to, to one of the things that, that God is really calling us to. He's, he's calling us to live a life. Now this, uh, Terry, I might have to look uh, some other way uh, because this, this sounds kind of crazy initially when I say it. But God is calling us as the people of God, hear this, to live a life in ecstasy. Wow. 
Wow. Oof. I must say that again. God is calling us to live a life in ecstasy, in a place where your relationship with him begins to pull off of you the things that could pull you down and hinder your living. Good God, oh, I'm teaching good in here. Nobody knows it though. Uh, is that, and I'm teaching. How about that? Is that, that somebody didn't think I could do it. But, 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 but here it is that, that we're, and I still got some minutes left, but, but we'll see. But, but we're, the ecstasy that God is calling the believers to live in is a place where you are living in a dimension that is beyond which that is fleshly can be attached to you. Good God Almighty. Uh, I, 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 was, I was talking to a friend of mine, a family member actually, when I was talking to a family member of mine, I began to ask him about that word. And he was like, ooh. And he said to me, he said, the first thing that came to mind, unfortunately for him, was that he used to be a drug user. And he said, and when he used drugs, he said that it took him out of his present context. And he went to somewhere else, and it was something he then began to chase. Y'all oh, God. I don't, I don't want to get us caught up into chasing some virtual high, but I do want us to get caught into chasing God. So where then, because we must realize that we have not been created only to live in a physical realm, but you also have a spirit man, and you've been called to live in a spiritual realm. And so it is, it is, it is ideal, it is necessary, it is commanded for us to live in communication with God, in communion with God. And whenever you live in communion with God, you now live in a place where you can escape God Almighty, from just one realm and live in two realms. Oh, God, I feel like I'm talking. Okay, uh, let's, let's read some scripture because um, that might be good. Let's, I'll start, though, with a definition. I want, you, I want us to consider, uh, consider living in ecstasy, meaning that we are standing outside of oneself or... Uh, the benefit of the believer is to only live life in this world or atmosphere, but having an ability to live beyond, watch this, hear this please, the ability to live beyond what we see or what we've experienced. Good God Almighty. I'm going to say it again. Uh, say with me, I have the ability to live beyond what I see and what I've experienced. Mm. That is a place of ecstasy. And that is a place of the will of God, the plan of God, that even when you have hard things that have happened to you, that God can cause you to live beyond your experience. This is the very thing that happens with Jesus himself. God Almighty, is that though he's in the middle of a place where they're ready to uh, kill him, he can talk about his own death. Why are you talking about your own death? It seems to me you should be running and hiding. Why won't you run and hide? Because I'm not just living here. Good God Almighty. I've got a revelation, and what happens is when you ever you are in a place where you get a revelation, your revelation opens up, come on, unveiling, come on, uh, disclosing, begins to show you revelation, begins to open a door to you that says this is another place you can live in. So believers must live in a place of revelation, revelation. Uh, let me, um, let me, um, and I, 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 uh, and I was dealing, dealing with this some, and while dealing with this, because all of this even taps back to um, how do we live in glory as dominionators? How do we live in glory as dominionators? And, and, and this ecstasy becomes one of the uh, thresholds that we must encounter and we must deal with and acknowledge. Um, but let's, let's, let's go to, uh, if you would with me, to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to actually... Uh, read this passage of scripture in uh, both the King James language, and then I'll, I'll read the Message Bible uh, following that. So we're going to 2 Corinthians, uh, the 12th chapter, and, um, and uh, we'll get this. Uh, 
iPad up and going and uh, take a look at the 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1. It says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come, am I reading the right way? Yes. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God know it. Such a one uh, caught up in the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body again or out of the body, I cannot tell, God know it. How he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet not of myself will I not glory, but in my infirmities. Mm. So I, y'all stay with me for a second. So I actually, as we read this passage of scripture, we find that there actually could be a glory in the infirmities or the trouble or the heartache or the pain or the doubt or the disbelief that is actually experienced. But the glory that becomes expressed in here comes expressed as I begin to enter into a realm, good God Almighty, that I cannot tell you whether I was in the body or out of the body. I do not know. God knows. Good God Almighty. But what's amazing about that passage is that it's still a seamless position because I don't know if I was here or there. But I know it was real. Good God am I. And what I want to talk to us about as we listen to this is that what God is giving us as kingly vision, our new perspective will be seamless between that which is spiritual and that which is natural. Good God. Lord, I'm running on the stool. It's a seamless transition. It's a seamless transition, believers, where, where now you will look and you will say, I don't know if I just felt that way or if God showed me something. I don't know what happened, but I know what I experienced was real. And the experiences that you have in your body will not hinder, hear me please, will not hinder the glory of God from being manifested in your life. Okay, let's read this. Let's read this in the Message Bible. Let's let's go there. The Message Bible, as you know, uh, begins to put some paragraphs together, and uh, does not uh, may not stop um, where you want, but we'll we'll see what happens. It starts off this way. He says, "You force me to talk this way, and I'm doing it. I'll do it against my better judgment. But now that we're at it, I may as well bring it up, bring up the matter of visions and revelations that God gave me. For instance, I knew a man 14 years ago was seized by Christ and swept away in, here's that word, ecstasy, to the heights of heaven. Good God of my, <laughs> I really do not know if this took place in the body or out of it, only God knows. I also know that this man was hijacked into paradise. Again, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. There he heard the unspeakable spoken, but was forbidden to tell what he heard. This is the man that I wanted to talk about. But About myself, I'm not saying another word apart from the humiliations. Good God Almighty. Uh, If I had a mind to brag a little, I could probably do it without looking ridiculous. and I'd still be speaking plain truth all the way, but I'll spare you. I don't want anyone imagining me as anything other than the fool you'd encounter if you saw me on the street or heard me talk. But of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head, I was given the gift of a handicap. Good God Almighty. 
to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Y'all, good God. Uh, uh, so I, I live with a vision that even what this earth is doing to me or what I've experienced in the earth, is not all that I experience, but its experiences are because of a different experience I've been called to have. Oh, believers, believers, you have been called to a greater experience in God that is one of ecstasy, ecstasy that you have not seen, heard, or felt before. Good God Almighty. I know y'all. This, this seems so uh, uh, a different type of a message, but stay with me. Uh, what if I told you that God wants you to experience joy that becomes, here's a mystery one you've probably heard a thousand times before, unspeakable. Good God. Joy unspeakable. Which means I'm trying to take you to a realm where you can no longer describe what I'm going to do with you. Good God Almighty. I want you to imagine uh, the next time you have a stressful situation, you've got joy and you're trying to figure out why. Y'all, you've had pain, you've had sorrow, you've had hurt, you've had difficulty, but at the same time, you've got joy and you've got peace. And you've got comfort and you're trying to figure out why it is because of the supernatural encounter that happens with the believer. Understand this, that in order for ecstasy to be ours, ecstasy becomes ours at the point of there being an encounter with he who is divine. It is at the divine encounter that then the weight of life begins to be lifted. Listen, I know right now there are a whole lot of people saying, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get me in this whole thing where all of a sudden I'm ignoring the reality of life. No, Paul says, no, I got stuff. I know it's there. Y'all could, uh, but let me tell you, I got other stuff that makes this, y'all not her. Uh, let me read it to you another way. The sufferings of this present time. Y'all are not worthy to y'all can't be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. Uh, uh, I, and we could get caught up in, in Job 14.1. Job 14, let's, let's read it out of the king's language. We could always, you always will have time. You always will have opportunity to get caught up in what the world gets caught up in, which is just the everyday mundane parts of life. And how dare us as believers who have interaction with the divine, true, living, holy God who knows all to look like the rest of the world? How dare us to begin to articulate the same exact struggle without a different outcome than the rest of the world? Why would we do that? How could we dare call ourselves believers? The world is waiting for us to begin to reveal the light that is within us. That's another passage. I'll read that in a second. But let's go to Job 14 because I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. Job 14 and 1, you know this. It says, a man that is born of a woman is of a few days <laughs> and full of trouble. Good God. Isn't that just a shame? A few days. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's like, oh, my goodness. You mean to tell me after a few days, then I'm just full of trouble. And anybody that's ever had a child. And has seen a diaper. Can I get a witness over here on the keyboards? That, that, that's right. And that after a few days, I'm sleepless nights. You're just like, it's full of trouble. Just full of trouble. But, 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 the, but the, the, the testimony here is that you can always talk about trouble. But the testimony of the believers to talk about glory. Good God. The testimony of the believers to talk about strength, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The, the testimony of the believer is to talk about the light of God and how the light shines through darkness. The testimony of the believer is that I know what all of the rest of us have talked about, but there is something more and beyond all of that. That is the testimony of the believer. I got to read. I got to read 
2 Corinthians, and I'm almost finished. Right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is one of, I think it's one of Darian's favorite passages of Scripture. I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go there anyway. Um, and I probably will read this as well in the Message Bible. didn't mark it, but I can find it. Um, it says in the King James language, it says this, or King James Version, it says this, Therefore, saying we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves, every man's conscience, in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Can I hit pause right there for a second? The glorious gospel of Christ, who is the Imagio Dei. Good God of mine. The gospel of Christ. And can I tell you that the Imagio Dei, let's go back to Genesis one, you know like I know that you were created, y'all not help me, as the Imagio Dei in the image of God. You are the image of God. So it means that you must in this season, those who are acknowledging their image, must also acknowledge the glorious gospel that they are. Oh, good God can I say it again? You are the glorious gospel. You are the glorious gospel. You are the glorious gospel. There is good news about you. Good. And you bring good news. Somebody must see you and see the light of God. Oh, God. Lord Jesus. Okay. Uh, well, that's, that's it. That should, that first four, last comma, after the last comma says, should shine unto them. Verse 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, an earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power of God, be of the power of God, may be of God, the power may be of God, and not of us. If you know the rest of it, you've preached it yourself. We are troubled on every side, yet not in distress. That is ecstasy. Y'all could get to be troubled on every side, but not be distressed is ecstasy. To be perplexed, but not in despair. Good God Almighty is ecstasy. And it is the assignment and it is the call of the believer to acknowledge this place. Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, I'm going through it in my body, the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Mm. Ah, let's... Y'all ready for message? This is message Bible. This is message. And uh, I got to come on with it. All right. I'm in chapter four, but I got to go to, I kept turning this page. I got to go to 2 Corinthians. That was first. That was about to mess this up. All right. Oh, it says, since God has so generously let us in on what he's doing, 
We are not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job because we run into occasional hard times. We refuse to wear masks. Don't take that as a COVID thing. Don't just y'all put your mask on. We refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. We don't twist God's word to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in, say it out in the open, the whole truth on display, so that those who want to want and can, those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. If our message is obscure to anyone, it's not because we're holding back in anyone. No, it's because these other people are looking or going the wrong way and refuse to give it serious attention. All they have eyes for is fashionable God, the fashionable God of darkness. Isn't it amazing he uses the word fashionable God of darkness? They think he can give them what they want. And that they won't have to bother believing a truth they can't see. Good God Almighty. They are stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that shines with Christ. Who gives us the best picture of God we'll ever get. Remember, our message is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the master. All we are is messengers and runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up darkness. Good God of right. And our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. If you look at us, you might as well, you might as well miss the brightness. We carry this precious, precious message around in an unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's uncomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we are not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles but we are not demoralized. We're not sure what to do. I love this line. Hear this one. We're not sure what to do, but we know the God who knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial, torture, mockery, murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. Good God of mine. Can I read that line again? What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Good God. Our lives are at uh, constant risk for Jesus to save which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. We're going through the worst. You're getting in on the best. Believers, God is calling our kingly vision to experience new measures of his glory new measures that he has for us. You are not called to be like the rest of the world. Your interaction with God is one of ecstasy. Your interaction with God is one that gives you a new proximity to God. And your proximity to God gives you great benefit. Benefit that what you have experienced in this world is not all that there is to experience in this world. Your divine connection, 
our divine connection takes us to a whole new level and dimension of glory in him. God is calling his dominionators, those who exercise and walk in authority and responsibility to be able to now stand and declare, because God in my life, I can now take responsibility. I can walk in authority and I can even be held accountable for what God expects from me. I want to pray with us today. I want to pray that as we go through this place, when we realize once again that we can be troubled on every side, that we realize the benefit of being part of the kingdom of God. So let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. God, you are great to us. Because brand new morning, brand, every day, brand new mercies we've seen. We declare that great is your faithfulness. We love you so much, Lord, for how you have blessed us time and time again, season after season. Your grace has not failed us. And we declare this morning that your grace is continuing to unfold in our lives. And we give you glory and honor for it. So God calls us not to hesitate to engage with you whenever trouble comes, to engage with you whenever difficulty shows up, to engage with you whenever there's strife, to engage with you at every turn of our life. Order our steps, for the steps of a good man have been ordered by the Lord. And we thank you so much for this. Now, if you're joining us this morning and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, all of this message for you, the best you can get is whatever results you try to accomplish by your own power. And I want you to have the benefit. I want you to have the benefit of receiving benefits that you could never earn. And we get that through identifying Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You may call all kinds or use all kinds of language for the word God. You may call El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. You can use all types of names for God. El Shaddai. But this is what I want you to know. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through Christ. So join me this morning, if you would, and let's acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And acknowledge as well that without Him, you are a sinner. But with Him, with Him, you can experience life eternal. So pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Save me from my sins. I declare that you are Lord and that there is none like you in all of the earth. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that simple, you have given the Lord your heart today. Find yourself a great Bible-believing church. We would love to have you as a part of Kingdom Worship Center. You can join us and be with us. If you've given the Lord your heart, please check off where we have the uh, chat section or, or over in the uh, request prayer section. Let us know that you've given the Lord your heart, and we would love to stay in touch with you to help you and disciple you in your walk with God. We thank you so much for fellowshipping with us today. Now, I would like all of you who are watching all across the globe to help Kingdom Worship Center do the work of ministry. We are a great church and we're getting better all the time. And we need your help as we do the work of ministry. And your generosity as you help us do the work of ministry, we really appreciate it so much. We know that you're a cheerful giver and a generous giver. So as you are giving this morning, you have several ways to give. They've probably been already been on your screen. You've got Cash App and Givelify, and you can go online to kingdomworshipcenter.org and give right there where it says the giving section or or you can even uh, still if you decide that that's not what I like to do I like to write my checks uh, just go ahead and send us a check to uh, Kingdom Worship Center 
at 6419 York Road, which is where our main offices are. And be a part of Kingdom Worship Center. Help us do the work of ministry. And you can join us either in our campus, uh, which we call our Towson campus, which is right north of Baltimore City, or our Columbia campus. And if you're nowhere in the state of Maryland, you can be a part of our I campus. So help us do the work of ministry. Help us get this saving word out where Jesus doesn't want you just saved. He wants you to live a life that is more abundant. We love you so much. Thank you again for joining us. I pray that you have a prosperous, prosperous Sunday and may the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. God bless you. Please listen to the upcoming announcements for this week. Join us along with Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat every two weeks on Mondays at 6 p.m. Sessions will be held on Zoom as our presenters touch on how faith and mental health intersect. The next session will be on Monday, August 24th. Please visit the link on the screen to register for free. Thank you so much to everyone who continues to give as Kingdom Worship Center endeavors to live out our mission of Kingdom Impact. Because of your generosity, we have been able to be a blessing to our community by hosting food drives and helping families in their time of need. If you have not already given today and would like to partner with us, please use one of the options listed on the screen and remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's outdoor service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing. Kingdom Worship Center small groups are a great way for our members and friends to engage in biblical community by intentionally gathering regularly for the purpose of joining in God's mission together. If you need more information, please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org to request more information. If you have yet to pick up your free bottle of anointing oil, please email profit min at kingdomworshipcenter.org to reserve your bottle. Pickups will be available at our Towson campus each Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. or second and fourth Sundays at our Columbia campus after service. If this is your first time joining us in service and you have a prayer request or a praise report, please send an email to prophetmin at kingdomworshipcenter.org. To get up-to-date information and special messages from our leaders, make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Maryland. You can also like our Facebook page, Kingdom Worship Center, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. We really hope that today's service touched your life the way it did ours. We look forward to having you join us online next Sunday at 10 a.m. at kwc.online.church or on our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Be safe and have a fantastic week.